Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So um, <clears throat> kind of, I'm using the, the mobile setup today. Just got the phone going. I got my uh, my uh, <clears throat> battery hooked into the phone and hooked into here to the, to the, you know, the audio thing. I got my iPad off here to the side so I can keep an eye on things, control it. And uh, of course I got this over here, the laptop. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, normally we would have the Christmas tree over here, but because of the wine cellar, we don't really have anywhere to put the tree, um, cause it would normally be where that chest is. Um, it's actually, we have a smaller tree now and it's kind of in the living room. So, uh, <clears throat> I thought about taking a picture of it and putting the green screen behind me and doing that, but I decided just to do this setup. Anyway, um, so we're going to do some Christmas wines. And uh, <clears throat> so these were these were wines that <clears throat> I'm having some lung problems. So I'm clearing my throat a lot, unfortunately, or trying to clear the lungs. Um, anyway, so these are these three wines were the uh, other three wines <clears throat> of a six pack that I bought at High Street Wine Company here in San Antonio for their holiday holiday six pack. So the other three were the Thanksgiving wines, and then these are these are the other wines. And we've got a sparkling, we've got uh, and then two reds. So uh, real quick, <clears throat> I have these to remind myself. So you've seen me use this wine key quite a bit um, over the past year, I guess. So this is the wine key I bought in France. I've had, I've had, uh, I've been asked where to buy this. Well, in the United States, I don't know where you can buy this. Um, though somebody at where I work, they have a wine key that has a straight edge. You know, it doesn't have the, the serrated edge. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I thought that was pretty cool that they actually, I don't even remember where they got it. But um, so this is just a single, you know, a single um, whatever uh, wine key. And I've been using it at the house to open wines for, for actually a while because I didn't, I mean, I have one of these upstairs in my, in my actual room, but um, I couldn't find my, one of my regular keys. Now this key um, is like my old one from work. Uh, the reason it's my old one is that the, um, the serrated edge is starting to, get really dull because um, I've used it like as a knife to cut things besides foil. So I have, I have a brand new one. Um, the difference is with the new one is that this doesn't come out all the way. So I might send it back for a new one. Um, and I still have, I still have another one that just doesn't have the sapphire. It has like a uh, onyx, not onyx, um, tiger eye. Anyway, I like the sapphire one. Anyway, these are tw uh, 12 to $13 as high coop uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link below. That, that will be an affiliate link, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, speaking of affiliate links, <clears throat> I totally forgot about that. Um, put myself a little note here in my notes. Um, <clears throat> because I, I've bought a lot of wine from Underground Cellar, um, they they decided to give me an affiliate link so that if you, if you join them with this link, and let me go look for this real quick. Here we go. Um, you will, I will get a little bit of credit for this. Now, let me just double check. So it's a referral code. So let's see, this referral code, I'm going to put this in here so that the next few episodes, I have the reminder on what it is. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so, uh, I, I, I buy a lot of wine from them. I buy a lot of wine from Psalm Select. Um, maybe I should reach out to Psalm Select and be like, hey, can you give me a referral code too? Um, so if you type in 1337 wine, you know, all together, um, so it says, this is your referral code. That's the referral code for when you refer friends, I would receive $25 off the next purchase when they make their first purchase. So if I buy, buy more wine, I get 25 bucks off. So if you'd like to help me out and buy, buy some wine from a, from a cool company, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, so <clears throat> I've explained Underground Cellar 
from time to time and what they are. Um, it's kind of it's kind of cool because you buy wines, they, they, have, they have an offer almost every day. Um, well, every day they have an offer, sometimes more than one. And, and these offers last for a certain amount of time. And you may have a buy-in for like, say, $30 or $15 or $50 or whatever. And that's the, that's the lowest price wine that's in the offer. But you have the potential of getting wines at a higher, uh, at a higher value. And um, most of the time I get maybe, and then I have like, say, anywhere from four to like 10 wines in this offer. And the really expensive wines, there's probably one or two or three bottles. You know, and they'll tell you the percentage of, they'll tell you the percentage of bottles that are available at that price point. And you'll see that the, the, the wines that you're most likely going to get are either the, like I said, the entry level price, price point, or maybe a little bit higher. Sometimes the entry level is not, not a highest, not one of the highest percentages. It's maybe kind of low, but you'll, you'll get a decent quality wine for that, um, for that amount. And then there's always potential of upgrades. And the way you get upgrades is you have to order at least, I think two or three bottles, um, to get like one upgrade. If you order six bottles, you'll get like four or five upgrades. So it's a cool thing. I kind of, I kind of equate it to gambling, which I like to do. So you never know what you're going to get. <coughs> but um, anyway, so I've gotten quite a few wines from them. Um, the, the, I want to call it the downside, but the caveat to remember is that you're not specifically choosing the wines you're getting. So when you say, hey, I want to buy three bottles, you don't know which three bottles you're actually going to get. You may not even get the entry level. You may get all three. You may get, you know, um, the next three up, you know, type of thing. So but typically you get at least the first one, you know, the entry level. And then if you, depending on how many bottles you order, your upgrades, um, you know, you get two upgrades or whatever. So I've gotten some, I've gotten some cool upgrades from them. So it's a cool place to, oh, just, I don't know, allergies, I guess. Cool thing to go to. So enough with the sponsorship here. Let's get into the wines. We're going to use the old work one. So the first one here. Uh, this is the uh, De Fevri Prosecco di Treviso. It's a non-vintage. Um, I don't know if there are any. I've never even... Oh, it has a little tab on there. Let's try the tab. We we're told in the song world, don't use the tabs because they tend to break. So let's see if this one breaks. Or it doesn't work. It worked. Ta-da! Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if there's any vintage... Are there any vintage Proseccos? I've never seen one. Maybe I should check that out. So anyway, um, so let's get a little bit of history with these guys. So uh, they were started, they were founded in 1978, um, and the name is uh, De Fevri. Um, they are uh, located in a town called Vider. That's not Vider, Texas, by the way, um, which is in East Texas, almost at the border of Texas, Louisiana. Um, uh, but it says in the heart of the DOC, DOCG area of Prosecco. I got a little bit of a kiss on that. It's been, it's warmed up just a touch. It's not ice, ice cold. Um, and it produces diverse varieties of Prosecco wine from DOC Treviso to DOCG. Uh, and then from Milisamato to Cartese. And it owns 20, 21 hectares of vineyards. All right, um, and then uh, they're spread across municipalities of Valdo Biadene, uh, Vidor or Vider, uh, and Fara di Soligo. Uh, after 40 years of hard work and experience, uh, their wines are sold all over the world. Blah blah blah. Um, and they've got the daughter and the son are now uh, involved in the winery, so we've got that. And uh, <clears throat> so this particular wine, so in case you didn't know, um, Prosecco used to be the name of the grape. Like it was called the Prosecco grape, but it's really the area. So the grape is actually called Glera, G-L-E-R-A. Um, and that's the official grape of Prosecco. Kind of like Sangiovese is the main grape of uh, uh, Chianti and Brunello di Montalcino. It's the only grape in Brunello di Montalcino. In Chianti, it's the majority grape on uh, over the years, the recipe or the, or the, the legal requirements of Chianti have changed. Um, but anyway, so <clears throat> same idea. 
Um, so it's the vineyards are from around the villages of Vidor and uh, Croqueta del Montello. Um, let's see. They harvested from the 10th to the 20th of September. Um, they, they, uh, the vinification is without the skins and stainless steel vats. Uh, second fermentation is with selected local yeast at controlled temperature for 30 days. The winemaking method, they call it the Italian method, also known as Martinote, uh, with second fermentation in stainless steel tanks with natural fermentation. Um, and then it is dry, 11% <clears throat> alcohol, yada, yada. Those are all those technical specs with that. Um, so real quick, so there's different ways to create sparkling wines. Um, one is the traditional method, which is the second fermentation, which gives you the bubbles, happens in the bottle. Then you have the tank method, uh, which is basically what they're talking about there. Um, and then you can also um, uh, inject, you can just inject CO2 uh, without a second fermentation. So, so that's what we're going to do here. Um, I've said it many times. I'll say it for the next episode, which is New Year's Eve. Um, the best way to drink sparkling wine, especially if you want to smell it, is in a regular glass. Um, speaking of the glasses, these are the Wine Folly glasses, and I probably should look that up too, how much I spent on them. I got a set of six for some unknown reason. I, I really don't know why I did it, because I really don't need six more glasses, but I did it. And um, is this it right here? No, this is, uh, that was the, that's the book. So uh, they had they had a deal going on where uh, you could get the glasses for 135 bucks for the set of six. Um, it normally is 150, but I'd gotten like a discount, yada yada. So um, anyway, um, they're cool glasses. They're they're considered a universal glass for red and white. They have uh, two little things here. They have a 75 centiliter and a what's 150 150 centiliter. Um, uh, uh, no, that doesn't sound right. 75, that, no, 75 milliliter, not centiliter, because <laughs> that'd be really big, and 150 milliliter uh, lines, uh, and that equates to like three ounces and five ounces, I think, if I remember correctly. So the, the only reason to use these, these little pup puppies is because it's pretty. That's all. Plus, you can put more of it in here. You can only put about four-ish ounces in there. Anyway, um, so let's check it out. So right off the bat on the nose, um, I can smell it, but it's actually fairly aromatic. Um, my nose isn't too stopped up. It's just really the chest. Um, I mean, it smells like a sparkling wine. There's there's hints of, you know, like, like a, a bready quality brioche, that type of stuff. There's also like, I'd say like some orange in there. I had somebody tell me don't ever swirl sparkling wine, but I'm gonna swirl it. Um, yeah, kind of an orange, tangerine, a um, bit of green apple, and um, um, <clears throat> not, not wax. But there's like a non-fruit aromatic here. Um, kind of floral, actually. Like maybe an apple blossom or something like that. Yeah, so let's, let's check it out. By the way, um, so... The six pack cost me $125, um, but this would normally sell for 15 at the wine shop or at the winery, not the winery, the, the wine bar. Who They also have a, a retail license. <clears throat> so the palate is very much like the nose. Um, there's, there's a citrus quality, more of the orange type, not really like lemon lime citrus. Um, there's definitely a bready quality to it. So that would be the aging on the lees. Um, <clears throat> and I don't, did it say how much it aged? I oh, know it didn't. Um, so the lees and actually that bread quality is coming through really well. You know, 
I've had a lot of different kind of Proseccos over the years, you know, from really cheap to not cheap, um, not expensive and not cheap. I mean, this is $15 uh, retail. This is really good. Like, like I'm actually really surprised and impressed because Prosecco kind of gets a bad rap. It's like being like not really good sparkling wine because we get a lot of bulk made, not really good. I mean, this is not fermented in the bottle. It doesn't have to be. Um, but you get a lot of, you know, inexpensive, cheaply made, cheap quality Prosecco. And this is actually got flavor to it and, and, and all that. I mean, it's got the green apple. It's got the, the tangerine and the orange. It's got that bread quality to it. Um, I'm really impressed with it. Honestly, I'm really impressed with it. I'll put this over here. It seems like it's in my way if I do that. So yeah, I, I really like it. So um, <clears throat> these are little um, sparkling wine slash champagne caps. Um, this style is the one I like the best because it clamps on. And I just happen to have four of them of that style. One, one of this and then I have these for New Year's Eve ones. So it helps keep the CO2 in. So I've got <clears throat> four bottles of sparkling wine to crush <clears throat> in like a week's period of time. So we have some friends coming from out of town. So we're going to be, they don't know it yet, but we're going to be drinking some sparkling wines over the next few days. So I'm pretty impressed with that. That's really good. All right. So um, let's move on to wine number two. All right. <clears throat> so this wine is the uh, 2016 Jose Antonio Garcia Bezzo Unclin, I guess, Unclean? Maybe it was Unclean. I'm not really sure. Um, so this is, you know, another wine. It, it retails for $30 at High Street Wine Company. Um, so Bierzo, what who's Bierzo? Where, where do they come from? Oh, I don't have my Corvin. Hold on. Right over here. Oh, I think, I think it will fit. I think it will reach. It's like, I'm not going to open the, I'm not going to open the wine. Go. Ta-da. All right. And no, I still haven't emailed Corvin to complain that my unit seems to be failing. I'll probably have to buy a new one anyway. So, did it do it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, we'll see. All right. So, Berzo, Bietzo is in a um, northeast, no, northwestern part of Spain. It's near an area called Galicia or Galicia and Rias Baixas and all that kind of stuff. So kind of near that Portugal time. And Mencia is, um, for all intents and purposes, not necessarily a native grape of Spain, but a native grape of the Iberian Peninsula. Um, they, uh, it's actually from Portugal and it's got, um, um, there it goes. Yeah, I have a bad unit. I'm going to have to get a new one. This sucks because I got a whole bunch of wines I got to do. Um, and I think I have another capsule. So I think I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to buy a new unit. Actually, I'm going to email them tonight and see if they can give me a replacement one for free. Considering I use their stuff all the time. So anyway, um, I can't remember the parentage, but these are like grapes. No one's, you don't, you've never heard of. I've never heard of them. Maybe you have, I'm not sure. But, uh, but it tends to be, you know, really, a lot of times it tends to be a very um, big, uh, bold wine. And, uh, but if I remember correctly, this person uh, who makes this, um, it says, Unclean is a fresh vin de soif, I don't know, style of Bierza, which offers an antidote to the overblown internationally styled wines previously made in the region. Uh, Jose's mineral unclean echoes the forgotten traditions of Bierzo or the Bierzo region while pushing the envelope. This wine shines when ordered from a magnum. Well, okay. Um, so let's say vinification is for, uh, organically grown family owned vineyards in the village of Val Tule de Abajo, uh, planted with 60 to 100 year old traditional Mencia, Mencia uh, bush vines from an ancient uh, genetic ancestry. Uh, some of these vines are more than 200 years old. Grapes are hand-picked, leaving stems on 30% of the bunches. Uh, it undergoes a spontaneous fermentation by natural indigenous yeast in large neutral French foods, foudres. So they're just really big barrels. Um, 
There it goes. With a 30-day maceration post-fermentation, four months of aging on fine lees, malolactic, of course, because almost all red wine goes through malolactic, and stainless steel without topping up, without topping up, and then bottled unfined and unfiltered with minimal intervention. Let's close that. Anyway, so let's check it out as this leaks. So on the nose, um, it's got it's got some red and black fruits. I'm just gonna end this now. There we go. Just put it out of its misery. Um, <clears throat> so it's got red and black fruits, but it's not the lead. It's not the lead aroma. It actually leads with a little bit of soy, a little soy sauce. A little bit of um, like cured meat, um, iodine, I guess, almost like a sanguine type of uh, thing. It has almost like a like a like that soy sauce sweet smell to it. Uh, a little bit of like kind of a stewed fruit, uh, prune. Um, kind of a sweet tobacco, almost like a swisher sweet type of thing. Um, yeah, kind of a fresh, fresh potting soil. Let's uh, check it out. So a couple weeks ago, I had I had another wine from this area, and it was more the bigger, bolder style, but it was just rich and lush and just full of just these spices. So this has like all the spices, but it's not like over the top powerful. It is kind of like, it's kind of easy drinking. Like this could be a wine you could just drink without food. Um, but yeah, it leads with the spices on it. But there's also like the, there's a cedar box, <clears throat> there's a a, a bramble um, nettle or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's there's like clove, a little bit of cinnamon, <clears throat> um, touch of a, a touch of a potpourri, and then the fruit quality is more of a black fruit. So like that prune stewed fruit quality on the nose is non-existent on the on the on the palate the mouth the palate. Um, it's not heavily tannic. It's it's actually I, I would consider it medium, almost medium minus on the tannins. Um, acidity is pretty high, like some probably by medium plus on the acidity. So your mouth is watering. Um, so while I said you could drink it without food, you probably really need the food to calm down the acid to kind of balance out what's going on in your mouth. Um, but it's not overly tannic. I mean, this is definitely a charcuterie type of. Of, uh, of wine, <clears throat> it's really flavorful. I mean, this would go great with any type of Christmas type of um, uh, a food. If you had like a ham, like if you actually got Spanish ham, Iberco, right? And you seasoned it really nice. Um, you know, if you have a turkey going on, um, if you have say a roast beef, if you decide to do that and really spice it up, um, maybe a pork, maybe a pork roll, um, that you that maybe you stuffed it with, you know, good like a good stuffing with some, you know, all these types of great spices in there. This would pair really well with that type of stuff. I didn't really talk about this. I mean, for, for the prosecco, um, you know, I, you definitely could have it as your as your little like cocktail hour, like your little reception type wine. Um, <clears throat> you could have it with your salads. Um, maybe even have like a like a like a fruit salad type of thing going on. You could do that, or you know, some cheeses to start to start the night. Of the flight of six, this is probably my favorite of the six. It's a good one. I really like it. Let's kind of check over there, make sure it's all good. So let's just move on to wine number three. But I need to get. <coughs> I need to get a. 
it's kind of a good thing I don't have the green screen going on. And it's really good that I have a really, really long uh, cable for, the, <clears throat> for my, whatchamacallit. So, no, there's no Paul Maz in here. I got the box from my old job when I was over at Morton's. I'm just hoping I have, yep, I have one more. Got one more capsule. So, I need, I need to definitely email these guys tonight. And see if they can do anything for me. If not, I'll just buy a new one. Now, I had inquired about getting a review unit of their, like, $1,000 Bluetooth one. <coughs> but that didn't happen. So, I mean, I would have given it back. I wouldn't have expected to keep that. I mean, $1,000, that's, you know, I would have, like, you know, tried it for a few episodes and then send it back. Which, you know, when you're in the tech world, uh, you do all those, you know, these guys that get to review phones and cameras and all kinds of gadgets and phones... They're either buying it, you know, they're flat, either flat out buying it, or if they get, or if they do a review, if they get a free one, they usually send it back. They don't get to keep, you know, $1,000, $500, you know, $1,500 pieces of equipment, typically. So they usually have to send it back. Oh, this is, oh, this is a, a, a Corvin cap. Well, hold on. I totally forgot a screw cap. So I have to disconnect this real quick. Let's say that again. Totally forgot that was a screw cap. <coughs> All right, so this wine is, bam. Close that up, close that up. This is the 2006 uh, Killacanoon Cabernet Sauvignon Blocks Road. Retails for about 40 bucks. Um, where is it, there it is. Anyway, um, Full disclosure, I actually have had this wine already. Um, it was by accident. <clears throat> I went to the wine bar. Um, I think this is the good one. I went to the wine bar and one day and I said, just pour me something. And uh, the Scott who runs the place um, pours me some of this and he goes, oh yeah, that's in your pack. And I was like, oh. And it, it, the look at my face must have been priceless. It must have looked like you know, I like swallowed poison or something like that because I freaked out. I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to drink the wines ahead of time. But I was like, forget about it. You know, it happens. So, all right, cool. I got the right one. So let's do that. If you don't know, the uh, Corvin makes some screw cap things and um, they're good for about 50 punctures. And they did send me these for free. Well, actually they're marketing company did and um i did a review on them about a year ago i guess yeah a little over a year yeah about a year ago a little more of that and um uh on some uh, gruner and uh they work really well they're, they're designed to keep things fresh for about three months and they definitely kept the wine fresh for three months uh, i got it to about five and a half months and on the gruner still was drinkable very very drinkable um, it wasn't as high acid as as it was as a fresh bottle was but, I mean, it still had a, a pretty good acidity. All right, so <clears throat> Kilkanoon, um, do I have like their little history here? So they were founded in 1997 when winemaker and proprietor Kevin Mitchell purchased the property of the same name in the hamlet of Penwortham in South Australia's picturesque Clare Valley. Um, he's got, uh, his, his family uh, has been growing grapes for a long time. I thought it was, thought it was, doing it um and then uh his father mort has been has been a defining influence planting and tending to kill uh golden hillside suite of vineyards including the famed mort's block for over 40 years so um so he's been so been around for a little while so <clears throat> uh, i'll preface everything by saying that i've had the wine 
and I don't remember exactly, like everything exactly about it. Um, I, mean, I had a glass, um, but I remember it being kind of okay. You know, like it was good, but I probably would have rather had something else. So we'll see how this, we'll see what this one, we'll see about this bottle and maybe I just had to get used to it. I don't know. So right off the bat, I mean, it's got this kind of unusual uh, aroma, almost like a bacon fat. Like I would think this was like a Shiraz or a Syrah from Northern Rhone at first. <clears throat> it was like a bacon fat type of thing. And there's a savoriness to it. Um, there's also a um, kind of a kind of a smoked meat quality. I have a barbecue pit, a little smoky, like you know the coals are are spent. Um, a bit of black fruit. Now remember this this wine's twelve years old, so there's going to be ex it's, so it's it's exhibiting wines that are a little bit older. It doesn't have it doesn't have that fresh fruit in your face, um, ripe fruit. I mean, these, these are a little stewed. These are a little old, little desiccated. Um, the color, I mean, it's kind of hard because I got a red, red background, but, um, it, it's starting to turn brown, which is normal. So, you know, just swirling in the glass and go, yeah, it's starting to brown. That would tell me it's either Italian or it's old, older. And it's, so it's already starting to, it's already starting to do that. There's, um, there's like this pepper, a spice. I mean, there's a lot going on in the glass. So let's check it out, man. So I don't know why I didn't really care for I mean, I, I cared for it enough to drink it. But I don't know why I, when I drank it that last time about a month ago that I was kind of like, eh, it's okay, you know. I really do like it. I like I like this one better. <clears throat> I like the Berzo better, but it's more up my alley. But this is this is drinking really well. So it's kind of juicy. Um, the savoriness and, and that type of smoked meat quality and, and bacon fat. I don't know what's going on over there. Uh, bacon fat <clears throat> um, uh, is not as prevalent as it is on the nose. Um, the, the fruits are somewhat ripe, not as desiccated, not, not, not as stewed, but you've got the blackberry. Um, you've got a touch of raspberry, but it's mostly black fruit going on here. Um, the spices aren't, aren't as, aren't as bold. Um, on, on the palate, it's, it's a little more subdued, you could say, but it's, it's elegant. It's, it's balanced. It's not too in your face. The, the tannins aren't super aggressive. And honestly, there's, there's this like, there's this like, um, <clears throat> almost like an orange peel beef quality to it. So there's like a Chinese, um, spice, like stir fry meat quality to it. Almost like a Mongolian beef or an orange peel beef. There's a touch of that orange in there, um, uh, and the soy and all that. It's really tasty. Um, I, 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 I don't know why I didn't dig it. And I'll, yeah, so here's the thing. Sometimes when you're drinking wine, um, your mood, your health, your, you know, if you're tired, if you're you know, wired, whatever, can affect how you taste not just wine, but everything. You know, certain things taste better in certain environments and you're in a certain mood. You know, sometimes you know, we all have like, hey, I'm in a mood for this type of food. <coughs> so if you have that food, it's like, all right, I've got it. Um, and sometimes you're not in the mood for something, but that's all you got. So you may not enjoy it as much as you would say on a different day or time. So I'm really liking this wine, but again, it's got that age to it on the nose, especially you got that, that stewed quality, you know, 
on the nose, you're kind of like, oh, I'm not sure. The wine might be, you know, it might be too old. But when you taste it, it tastes it tastes better than it smells uh, in certain aspects. I can see totally digging on this wine. <clears throat> and I got three months to finish it. So, um, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below to find out more about these wines and if I remember the, the wine key and all that. And uh, you can click the donate button if you like. And uh, we'll see you again next time.